Hi, you fam. Welcome back. Hope you guys are having a great day. I'm Joe. I'm Dan. We're back with another reaction. It's another pitch meeting in the MCU. Which one, Dan? So we're on to Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. What could possibly be wrong with this movie? I can think of a few things. I guess only one way to find out. Cheers to you, fam. Enjoy. So, you have a Guardians of the Galaxy sequel script for me. Yes, sir, I do. So we're gonna start this one off with the Guardians fighting a giant space monster while Baby Groot stars in a Baby Groot toy commercial. <laughs> I love it when movie <laughs> scenes are also commercials. I know you do. So why are they fighting a space monster? Well, these gold people called the Sovereign hired them to protect some batteries and they said they couldn't risk losing any of their own people. Okay. But then Rocket steals some of the batteries so they chase the Guardians with their fleet of remote-controlled spaceships. They have a fleet of remotely controlled spaceships? Yeah, pretty cool, right? Why didn't they use those to fight the space monster? Good what do you mean? Well, Very if their battle technology specifically designed to not put them in danger, why did they hire the Guardians in the first place? Because. That works. Anyway, then this dude Stakar <laughs> tells Yondu that his funeral is gonna suck. Oh, so Yondu is gonna die? Oh, is it that predictable? <laughs> Having a character tell another one about his funeral makes me feel like we're gonna see his funeral. We're gonna see his funeral. Well, at least he's not one of the most well-liked characters. Actually, by the end of the movie, people are gonna like him a lot. He's gonna have this thing where he says that he's married poppins and stuff oh mary mm -hmm. poppins is tight oh that sounded kind of weird <laughs> yeah as soon as i said that it sounded weird <laughs> so we're actually gonna kill off a well-liked character that's kind of a first for us yeah and it's really gonna come as a surprise because all the main characters in this movie are pretty much invincible oh they are yeah they're gonna survive so many things that nothing's gonna feel like a threat anymore what oh, kind great. of stuff are we talking here oh just stuff like crashing their ships smashing head first into rocks getting crazy beams of whatever go through them violently hitting trees getting struck by monster tentacles being swallowed traveling traveling through space at dangerous <laughs> speeds, being literally next to an explosion, getting their ships shot thousands of times. That's a lot of stuff. Oh yes. yeah, it's gonna feel like a cartoon. People like cartoons. Anyway, in this movie, we're gonna have Peter meet his dad and he's a celestial being named Exposition. His name is Exposition? <laughs> oh, no, sorry, it's Ego. I got confused because 90% of his lines are Exposition. Okay. Wow. Yeah, so he brings them to his well planet, done. which he is, and then he shows them a PowerPoint presentation explaining that he banged Peter's mom. That's kind of weird. <laughs> Super weird. And so most of the Guardians are gonna hang out on Ego for a good chunk of the movie. What are they gonna do there? Not much. Huh. But there is this character, Mantis, who's like Ego's servant, and she's like, I have to tell you guys something about Ego, and it's really bad. Oh, that's exciting. Yeah, but then she's not gonna tell them for like 30 minutes of screen time. Mm -hmm. Wow, really stretching this out, aren't you? I am. So what else happens in the movie? Well, I also split up the Guardian so I could stretch it out even more. Smart. So Rocket and Groot and Yondu are being held prisoners by the Ravagers, and then Yondu is gonna murder them all with his arrow. The people that were his allies, like two days prior? Right. Oh, that's so dark. No, 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 there's gonna be cool music playing and it's gonna be slow-mo. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, it's gonna be a really fun time. Amazing. Yeah, taking lives while music plays is gonna be a really big part of this film. Death is great. Hail Satan. What? Wait, oh, wow. Wait, wow. Well, Ego is gonna show Peter another PowerPoint presentation about how he banged a bunch of aliens. Kind of inappropriate. Yeah, and then Mantis is gonna reveal that he's been killing all his children because they didn't hold the celestial gene. So she's kind of complicit in that because clearly she knew it was wrong to be killing kids. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure but I think people are gonna like her anyway. It's gonna be tough to get people to like a character that's complicit in wide-scale child murders. Actually, super easy, <laughs> barely, barely an inconvenience. Oh what do you God. mean? Well, she's gonna act super innocent and adorable. Oh, cute. Yeah, she's even gonna join the Guardians at the end of the film. That is so sweet. I don't even care about those dead kids anymore. <laughs> Nobody will. Wow. Wow. So anyway, Ego needs Peter's celestial genes to move his plan of expansion across the universe forward. And Peter is into it, but then Ego admits that he killed Peter's mom. Why does he do that? Well, because I needed Peter to find out something how and so having ego just say it unprompted felt like an easy way to do that fair enough so then peter is devastated and he wants to kill ego yeah i get it i mean finding out that his dad killed his mom that's gonna be a dark moment you'd think so but then ego's gonna turn into david hasselhoff <laughs> oh undercutting <laughs> emotional scenes with silliness is our bread and butter yeah feeling emotion sucks also i like that finding out a key fact about his mom's death is what drives the climax yeah i think it might be a first for marvel if i'm not mistaken yeah i think it is i mean other than iron man and captain america civil war maybe because it's so recent people won't notice maybe so anyway then everyone's gonna join together Lord. and defeat ego wow how do they manage that they destroy his brain okay but the fight takes place on a planet that is him yeah he shouldn't really be able to lose doesn't sound like he should but it's not like anyone's gonna really look into the science of this you know it's just for fun right it's a movie with superpowers and talking raccoons you'd have to be a real killjoy to check if the science works <laughs> well that Thank God that's Neil deGrasse Tyson for you. <laughs> Unnecessary, but okay. He did bang a lot of aliens out there, didn't he? He really did. I mean, it's Kurt Russell, man. Come on. If I was an alien. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Jeff.
I mean, if I was the thing, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. He can transform himself to anything, just like the thing. Now it makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You know, I never thought about that moment where Yondo is going throughout his ship and killing all of his former Ravager buddies there mm -hmm. with his arrow as a dark moment. But it really is when you stop and think about it. I'm like, just a few hours ago, these were all your buddies. And they took one betrayal, and now you're just killing them all. Well, kind of like the beginning of Age of Ultron, too. They were talking about whether the Avengers just out there, like, murdering these guys. Yeah. It's like... There's a lot of large-scale killing in these shows when you think about it. They are, and they make they make them into comedy moments. Yeah, I mean, granted, yes, they're bad guys. You know, nobody's going to be all that remorseful about it. But still, I mean, it's killing a lot of people here. Yeah, right? Now I can't watch that ever again the same way. Because mm -hmm. it's like, all I'm going to see is you just out there going on a uh, crime against humanity streak there. <laughs> right. Or, I mean, maybe not humanity, but, you know... Just like a straight-up murder rampage. And then, of course, with them killing Ego's children, too. You guys are complicit in this, and you're just going to accept Mantis as a friend? Oh, that's a fair thing to bring up. The other thing you gotta you gotta look at there is, like, how much Mantis has the mind of a child at times, and probably probably can't couldn't for a good long while decipher true good from bad, because if this is your only teacher... Mm -hmm and it's a planet named Ego, whatever it tells you, you is good and bad, you can probably just take as gospel. True. Because, I mean, who did Mantis really react, you know, interact with outside of Ego until the uh, Guardian showed up? Nobody, yeah. except the other kids. I mean, I don't know where Mantis came from, but it's like I'd be willing to venture that Ego kidnapped when she was a child, you know? Well, actually, they, they do explain that in the uh, Guardian's oh. Christmas special. Do they really? Yeah. Oh. So actually, she is Peter's half sister. So she's one of Ego's kids. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, thank you. I didn't know that. <laughs> Learn something new. I love that he talks about how Ego is just like exposition, because that's really all he does. He tells you everything that he does. For real. <laughs> like his whole plan for the galaxy. Like, don't show us something. Don't just tell us everything you're going to do. You know, I can't say I blame Ego for that. When you are a, a celestial, mm -hmm. if you know you're that powerful, would you mind sharing your plans with people, knowing there's probably not much they can do about it? Well, it's probably one of those people who just likes to hear himself talk, too. Oh, certainly. Not I many mean, people to talk to. I mean, considering his name, Ego, yeah, that's about right. It's pretty perfect, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I was actually kind of loving the fact that how much people were in danger from some pretty serious thing, like your ship crashing, being next to an explosion getting your head, going head first into rocks and stuff. How did these guys not die? All that stuff should have killed you. <laughs> yeah, Any one of those should have. Like, they're very averse to killing people in this franchise. I don't know why. I mean, Yondo did it with pretty with with a pretty good amount of ease on a ship with one arrow. Mm -hmm. But nothing else was going to do it to the actual uh, Guardians there. Right. So. I mean, yes, they're the protagonists, but come on, they're still mortal. Yeah, right. They made a really good point there, too, with the, uh, oh, what did they call those gold people? Uh, the Sovereigns. You made a good point with them. It's like, if you could have, if you had these remote controlled ships the whole time, you could have done your own dirty work. Right. But it sounds like, other than th other than being conceited douchebags, <laughs> you're also just lazy and don't want to do these things. Maybe their ships didn't work on the creature? I don't know. Well, then why would, why would the other guys' guns work on them? I mean, they kind of really weren't. Yeah. I don't remember what it was that did it in the, at, at the end, but it was from the inside out. So. Yeah, I think it was actually just Drax being swallowed and tearing it up from the inside. Well, even he was having a difficult time in there. Yeah, I'm sure he was loving every minute. I'm sure he was. Killing things is kind of his thing, so... It was overall a fun movie. Yeah, sure. I, I got no problems. With I can't say it was a well-written movie, but it was still fun. Yeah, and the soundtrack is always kind of what brings me back to it. Yeah, so soundtrack for sure is always really good. The, the actors themselves, you know, just have a lot of fun with the role. Yeah, really, if I'm going to say anything bad about it, it's kind of going to it's gonna be on those terms there. Of like, you know, sometimes it's just plot holes. Yeah. But, you know, you got a good soundtrack and the actors actually fit what you're doing there. Mm -hmm. It's Then we can forgive a lot. So Yeah. But fam, I think we're going to leave it there. As always, be sure to like, subscribe, hit the bells, take a look at us on those things up there, and like and subscribe again. Also, guys, every now and then uh, a video of ours does get demonetized around here. So if you really want to help us out and make sure that that doesn't become an actual issue, consider joining and become a member, guys. We'd greatly appreciate that. But as always, this is Cocktail Flicks. I'm Joe. I'm Dan. And we'll catch you on the flip side. Cheers to you, fam. Cheers to you, Dan. Cheers to you, Joe. Later, guys. Later.